In John 4, 23 and 24, we read, But the hour cometh, and now it is, when the true worshippers shall worship the Father in spirit and in truth. For the Father seeketh such to worship him. God is a spirit, and they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. Truth is very important to the Christian. Unfortunately, there are many who uh, seem to disregard it. They say you're being too picky. There's too much, uh, too much God doesn't really care about. But he cares about his word. And he has said that he that is unfaithful in the least is unfaithful in much. And so we need to show ourselves faithful in that which is least. We love his word. We love the fact that Jesus died for us and that we can spend eternity with him because Jesus bore the wrath of God in our place. And he has forgiven us through, through Jesus Christ. So I'm here today to talk about Christmas. Christmas is 67 days away, I believe, from today. And uh, to tell you the truth about Christmas, which I learned some 26 years ago, it did not alter my dedication to the Lord in any way, but it is something that is quite challenging. But I think every Christian needs to know the truth. What is behind the December 25th holiday? Well, the December 25th holiday was a very old holiday. I don't know how long it has been in place, but the worship of the sun god Baal had been in place since the Tower of Babel, which we can read of in in uh, the book of Genesis, I believe it's chapter 11. It was really the original false religion. And of course, you know that Baal worship was continually the enemy of God all throughout the, the Old Testament. And it is mentioned in the New Testament as well, as there's a scripture to share with you on that. But the point is that uh, December 21st was the shortest day of the year. You could see that. They knew that astronomically. And so it was said that on that day that Baal, or Tammuz, died. And by three days later on the 24th, you could see that the days were getting longer. And so it was said then that Baal resurrected. And then the next day, the 25th, was observed as his birthday. This is a big holiday. It had trees. It had evergreen trees with red balls symbolizing the sun. And this is where the December 25th holiday came from. What's not as easy then is going, well, well how did we get, how did we get uh, Jesus' birthday to be with this if this is not the case? Well, we will get to that. But you can see that in the Scripture, God never tells us to observe the birth, the earthly birth of Jesus. He shares the account of it, but he doesn't tell us to observe it. And you can, you can tell he never told us to observe his birth or his resurrection, only his death. And you can see that even tied up in Christmas, you know, the birth and resurrection of the sun god was already in place. But the important thing was the reason, came, the reason Jesus came, and that is through his death on the cross, which we observe in communion as often as we are led to do so. We also know that the early church, that would be the apostles, the disciples, they never observed Jesus' birth. There's no, there's no record of this. It's just not historical. So the question that you might have then is, when was Jesus born? Did we just kind of randomly assign this to the 25th because there was another holiday there? And the truth is we know when Jesus was born. We do not know the exact day, but we do know the approximate time. We know that it was approximately in the beginning of October. And there are reasons that we know this. It is possible it could have been the very end of September, but it was around the beginning of October. And these are the reasons. One of the reasons is that there were shepherds abiding in their field, watching over their flocks by night. Then winter is the rainy season in Palestine, and they bring their sheep in from the fields into the, the fenced pastures during the winter months. And that happens, it's absolutely not later than October 15th. We also see that there was a taxing called for, and this is something that Caesar would not have called for in the wintertime because the winter was very, very dangerous for travel. It still is, although we've managed to find more ways to cope with it. Multiple records in scripture about wintering in a certain place. We, and so Caesar would not have called for a tax in the winter. There is the timing of Zacharias' service in the temple, that is, 
Zacharias was the father of John the Baptist. His timing says when Jesus uh, was born, because of course he came six months after John the Baptist. If we go back three and a half years from the time of the cross, or I guess appropriately the half year, we get back into the beginning of October. Also at this time, there were near the end of September, beginning of October, there are two Jewish holidays, Rosh Hashanah and Yom Kippur. And this may have been a reason why the inns were full as people were there observing these holidays. So where did Christmas come from? Remember that this December 25th holiday then would have been a very old holiday if it came from the worship of the sun god. And this would have been taken with mankind wherever he went when, he, when uh, the Lord scattered him at the Tower of Babel, scattered him being mankind at the Tower of Babel all over the, the face of the world. And so at the time of Jesus, at the time of the Roman Empire, there was a holiday called Saturnalia. That was the December 25th holiday. That's what they observed. It could have been called different things in different parts of the world, but it was a very big holiday because, again, this root of sun god worship was present in mankind. So we see that was in, I believe it was 350 AD. There were December 25th was declared by the Catholic Church, the Catholic Church having just been founded uh, maybe about uh, 35, 40 years before that. They declared December 25th to be the birthday of Jesus. And they made it a holiday. Well, as you can see, that was just all they did was they really ascribed it to Saturnalia. And in this way, they made plenty of friends with those who were already celebrating, getting drunk and having all kinds of <laughs> revelry. They really didn't care about uh, Jesus. Um, let's see here. So now we get into some of the more specifics as we're looking for truth. Okay. We have the account of the wise men coming to Jesus. Of course, the wise men only came when Jesus was about two years old. It appears that he was not quite two years old, but this is one of the lies. There are always wise men in the descriptions of, of Jesus' birth. I shouldn't say always, most always, that there are, and that is simply not true. We also do not know that there were only three wise men. The Bible does not give the number. It only gives the number of three, three kinds of gifts. But when the wise men came and they met with and they met with the king and they were in they were in Jerusalem, uh, it says that that all Jerusalem was was troubled at their presence. And they would not have been troubled from three wise men, you know, walking in on foot or riding in however they would do it. But as chances are, they were going for again. I mean, since the star appeared, we assume this was almost two years and they would have had. Uh, numerous wise men and definitely armed guards for their excursion across desert wasteland. Even uh, the, the Islamic prophet Muhammad in his early career, how did he make money for his religion? He was raiding caravans. He was a thief. And so they would have had security. And so there were not only three wise men. This is, again, an incorrect depiction. There was never any record of a gift exchange. The wise men brought gifts to Jesus, as was the custom to bring gifts to a new king. There was no exchange between them and the family or between each other. There's just no record of it. And there certainly was no Christmas tree, no mention of this. If you read in Jeremiah chapter 10, verses 2 to 4, and do this from the King James Bible, you will get a depiction of the Christmas tree and how it is how it is demeaned and spoken against in the King James. Of course, it is not called a, a Christmas tree, but you would be surprised how some of the new Bible versions go out of their way to distort this scripture so that you wouldn't, you wouldn't ever consider it to be a Christmas tree. I think one I read said uh, it, was, it would be like a scarecrow in a melon patch is describing this tree instead of the idol that really the tree is. And uh, so I advise that you look at that through the King James. And even if you would say, well, we can't be sure, I think you can be pretty sure that this description fits a Christmas tree and believers really ought to steer from it. And so we get into more reasons why Christians really shouldn't celebrate Christmas. Again, Christmas sponsors lies. The scripture that I read to you in the beginning from John chapter 4, verses 23 and 24 
Jesus is saying that those that worship God must worship him in spirit and in truth. And you see, Christmas is so filled with lies, there is just no way you can do that. It doesn't matter how sincere you are. You can't change this. You know, Christmas, the December 25th holiday, is in place because of Baal worship. And if you're doing any of these kinds of celebrations, they are not reflective on what really happened or what God wants. To observe any, to observe any way is a works-based salvation. We can read this in Galatians chapter 4, verses 9 through 11. Again, I'll have a list of scriptures at the bottom, things you can look at to uh, shore up your biblical knowledge on this subject. But really, for New Testament believers, there were no holidays. If you read in Acts chapter 15, verses 1 through 31, I mean, you know that the holidays were a part of the law of Moses, and the law of Moses does not apply to us today. Uh, nonetheless, even if there had been holidays, God would have said what they, what they are, when they were to be celebrated, and how. And there just aren't any for New Testament believers. But that's not a lot of fun, is it? The world loves its holidays. But even in this, as I say, to observe this anyway, then, is a, is a works-based salvation. And this is what it was to the Galatians. They were being warned because they were falling back into a works-based salvation. And observing days was a part of those works. We also want to look, I have a scripture I like to read. This is very tied together with unbelief. I read this from 2 Corinthians 6, starting with verse 14. Be not ye unequally yoked together with unbelievers. For what fellowship has righteousness with unrighteousness? What concord has light with darkness? What concord has Christ with Belial? Belial, there we have Baal worship, okay? Or what part hath he that believeth with an infidel? What agreement has the temple of God, that is you and I, we are the temple of God, with idols? For you are the temple of the living God, as God has said, I will dwell in them and walk in them. I will be their God and they shall be my people. And so you see, this is a serious bond with unbelief. I mean, you might ask yourself, this was one of the things that really stood out to me when when I was finding out the truth about Christmas. Why does the unsaved world, why do all of these people, some of them atheists, okay, why do all of these people that hate Christ still love Christmas? This ought to tell you something is not right. And really it is something that believers should have nothing to do with. As far as Christmas goes also, Christians love truth. We see in places like 2 Corinthians 13, 8, it says that we can do nothing against the truth, but for the truth. We also see in 3 John 4, uh, the Lord is writing, he said, I have no greater joy than to hear that my children walk in truth. We are unbelievably compromised when it comes to Christmas. Also, we find out that, as Jesus said, if any man would come after him, let him deny himself and take up his cross daily and follow after him. So it would be a, a, a part of denial, self-denial. And by and large, the professing church today just doesn't want to deny itself. Uh, it doesn't want to take up its cross daily. It gets along with everybody. Really, it's again, it's that age of anything goes Christianity. I just want you to know that it was not easy for me. And from the time that I discovered the truth about Christi Christmas, it was 10 more years before I actually laid it down. And I want you to know that when I laid it down, I did not lay it down out of a fear for my soul that God was going to, you know, just cast me aside. But it was a hypocrisy. It was hypocritical to, to worship God, to say I'm worshiping God on Christmas when it had nothing to do with him and it had everything to do with his enemy, with his lies. I did lots of things that were very dedicated to the Lord on Christmas. I had... I had some bad Christmases in my life, but I also had plenty of good ones, too. It was not an easy thing to do. And in America, Christmas is steep, steep idolatry. It has not been so bad in the nations we've seen so far in Africa. And that would be in Botswana and Tanzania. We have experienced uh, Christmas in both of those places. It was not a huge deal. However, I would urge any of you to lay down Christmas. If you think it's too late this year, then get it next year. We had broken it to our families. Uh, it would have been like in springtime of the year before we stopped. But I really encourage you, you know, to love the Lord. 
and to lay down Christmas. You'll be glad you did. God will help you. May the Lord bless.